Hey YouTubers, today I'm going to show you guys how to enable full read and write access on your iPhone 5, 5C, and probably even your iPad 4. So today we're going to be using what Apple Tech video or um, what Apple Tech 752, I believe that's his name. I'm sorry if I am saying your name wrong there, man. But anyway, what he's he has shown how to enable full read and write access on an iPhone 5 and even 5C in some of his videos. So this does not require a jailbreak at all, and it's actually based on, an, on, a, on the Checkmate exploit that was released basically about a couple months ago. It's actually December 20th right now, but this is a very, very simple uh, thing actually that will not be very difficult at all, provided that you follow the instructions that I'm showing you here correctly. So you will need an iPhone 5 or a 5C, but I will be showing you guys here on an iPhone 5. So this iPhone 5 here is going to be um, hooked up to my computer. We're going to be opening up Terminal here, and I'm going to be putting this phone into DFU mode by simply holding the power and the home button here for 10 seconds and then let letting go of the power button but keeping uh, but keep holding the home button here let's let's go and actually before I do anything here I want to CD into this directory right here on my computer but keep the terminal open here let's go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten let go of the power button, but just keep holding the home button here until iTunes just immediately begs, pesters you that you need to update your phone software, which you it really you will see that it's in recovery mode, but it's it's not. It's in DFU mode. Just type in dot slash iPhone DFU and type in space dash P. This is going to put your phone into phone DFU mode here, but now. We'll go ahead and type in the next command. This is These are all commands here that you can actually find in the instructions. But I'm making a video tutorial for you guys so that you can easily understand it as we go along. So type in IBSS. And iTunes will pester you again, but just close out of it. You don't need it. Right there, just close out of it. Um, and then type in the IBEC part. This is slightly di this is slightly different, but type it in and it's actually iRecovery dash F and then just hit enter there. iTunes will still continue to pass for you, I believe. Yep, there it is. There it is. Just hit cancel and just close out of iTunes. We don't need that. Um Quit iTunes, or just minimize it, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and then we'll go ahead and type iRecovery to space dot slash dot slash iRecovery to space dash s. And isn't it funny that I'm a Republican and I voted for Trump? I'm going to vote for Trump again. I get a lot of hate for saying that, but I don't care. Lo uh, go to loader here. Now, what we're going to do actually is very, um, it seems very hard, but it's actually very simple. Type in slash send device tree. Just drag and drop that device tree there and press enter. Okay. Now type in device tree and hit enter. Very simple. Now do the same for the RAM disk and the kernel cache file. Type slash send. And just, uh, you know, drag and, no, not, not that one, I'm sorry. Drag and drop the RAM disk. That's what we need. Drag uh, and drop the RAM disk in there. And type in RAM disk. <clears throat> Excuse me. And from there, the last one, type in kernel cache. And hit send. Now type in boot x. Let me show you here. I'm going to type in. I'm going to get out this, the camera recorder here. It's out right now. But I'm going to type in bootx and watch what will happen to my phone. 
Il Verbos boot, and it will go into what looks like a recovery mode kind of thing, like from iOS 6 days, but that's actually not what's happening at all. It's actually not um, in recovery mode. It's actually in basically a very different mode. But close out of that. Minimize, minimize out of that. We'll, we'll come back to that. Actually, we technically won't really come back to that. Go into Python now. Sorry about that. Okay. Anyway, go back into Python there. And, and go into this. TCP relay dot py and open with Python Launcher 3. Now close close out the preferences. We don't need those actually. Um, just open up a new window here and basically dra uh, drag and drop this in here and type in dash t22 colon semicolon. Anyway, 2222. Two, two, two. And forwarding local port. If you get this here, that means that it's ready to go. So now what we need to do here is open up a CyberDuck window here. Uh, you are not, you're not going to be using uh, WinSCP on your Windows computer, obviously. You're going to be using CyberDuck. Give it a minute. There it is. And now what we're going to do here is simply open up a, a new connection, which is from SFDP. Type in localhost, local host, and port is 2222. Type in root and then alpine, A L P I N E, and press connect. Um, now we go into uh, go and send command, send command, or open up a terminal. But anyway, send command, and you're going to need to type in. Give me a sec. Mount underscore H F S space slash dev slash disk. 0 s1 s1 space backslash mnt1 basically these are all backslashes just so you're aware of that okay <clears throat> excuse me and press send it looked like it didn't say anything just press send i guess again and it will just say mount underscore hfs resource busy that's fine with this if you go to mnt1 you now have full read and write access now be careful, guys, what you do here. Now, this isn't technically full read and write access. This is really just um, kind of like extraordinarily bed, bare bones um, read and write access. But you can't, you technically could um, edit stuff, but you really need to be very careful because you can actually only edit stuff here on the computer, believe it or not. You cannot do it on the phone. And it sounds tedious, but it's a, it's, it's like for the, the most immediate stuff. But I'm going to show you guys what I did here. I actually I got the internal settings by <clears throat> excuse me opening up the Apple internal folder here, and I got the internal settings here. But I also went to System Library here, and I went to Core Services and System Version dot uh, P list here. Let's open that up here, and. Trying to get it open up. Well, well, we'll drag and drop it here. Anyway, um, we'll go ahead and show you guys. I'll go ahead and show you. This is exactly what came from my file system here. And product type and release type strings are set to internal. But that's exactly what... If you don't want to do it illegally by putting the Apple internal directory in there... And you want to do it legally by simply putting in key, uh, plist key values. I get that. That's why system version plist exists anyway. So, and then from there, I even I go ahead and go into the, now. This is completely optional, actually. Actually, I'll I'll show you this. These are all the internal settings icons here. Um, some of them do have a little two, but that's that's that didn't matter to me. And because I just I just don't care about the, you know, tidying up and stuff. I'm just I'm just like, like on bleeding on on the bleeding edge, right? I'm, not, I'm always on the bleeding edge because you know it's all about me and what I want to get done. Now here's where it really kind of, beside the internals, uh, the internal um, key and the internal and the Apple internal folder. Here's where it really kind of shines, if you will. I actually put in. Um, 
oh, what do you call it? I went into the preferences UI and I basically got the internal settings to actually load via the uh, going into the pr uh, preference uh, the preferences UI here. Oh, the pre preferences preferences. I'm sorry. Wait, is it isn't here? Okay, preferences UI dot framework. We can see that I actually changed up the system for uh, the settings. No, I'm sorry, the control center dot plist. Now what I did here was actually very simple. The internal settings plist that I have in my internal settings tweak that is actually put in here. Um, I basically renamed the internal settings three dot plist to control center dot plist here. But this is very, it sounds extremely complicated, but it's actually very simple. But you got to be very, really, you got to pay very close attention to what I'm telling you guys here. It's extremely complex sounding, but it's it's actually, it's actually simple if you just follow it the right way. And um, if, you, if you understand what I'm saying. So, but this is where all these keys here, disable proximity, um, disable low battery alerts, all this stuff, even even stuff like uh, dis a respringing from the app switcher, all that kind of stuff. And really, it's just basically a way of trying to give you guys a bare bones jailbreak with something that is hopefully easy to understand and all that. I'll go ahead. I'm going to reboot out of this iPhone here and show you guys that this is very easy to do. Let me go ahead and set the command. Give me a sec. I'm going to go ahead and set the command. The command to reboot back, by the way, is reboot underscore BAK. But let me go ahead and switch to my screen, my uh, video recorder. I don't even tell you guys this. I just do it because I'm rushy as hell sometimes. All the time, actually. Every time. It's a bad, it's a bad habit, I'm afraid. So hit send and it'll reboot back to stock iOS. My dad. Very simple stuff, guys. I appreciate you guys watching this video and I appreciate you guys, you know, taking the time out of your day to do this. Um, let me know what you, what you guys think in the comment section down below. And as always, thanks for watching.